Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I very first of all do have to apologize. It looks like I ran into some uh, bug with either the streaming software or YouTube. So I've actually been sitting here trying to stream for the past 20 minutes and actually I thought I was streaming. The software indicated me that I was live. And only now when I looked into the YouTube app on my iPad to see what's going on in the comments, I noticed that hey, the thing isn't visible to you guys. And um, apparently I did have a test live stream set up earlier with another airplane which was set to private mode. And apparently it streamed into that private mode even though it told me I was live with you guys. My apologies for that. So um, my apologies for the 20 minute delay and um, obviously I have half a flight deck set up done by now. And I would be ready to push in a couple of minutes. Um, so, yeah, that was um, interesting to call it that way. That was definitely interesting. So, well, luckily I checked my iPad and I noticed, hey, wow, um, you guys don't see anything. Okay, well, the thing is solved now. So, let me give you a quick introduction into where we actually are right now. So... We're sitting on the ramp at Zurich in the lovely MD-83 and um, we have pretty much completed a setup to um, start flying this airplane from Zurich towards um, Berlin. Now, the interesting thing today is that one of you guys was so generous to gift me a copy of the FT Zim Plus sound mod for the MD-80. So, we have the FTZIM Plus mod installed today. And um, that is going to give us a whole different sound set for the airplane. You can actually hear it in the back already now. And um, these new avionic cooling fans are from that mod. Also, we are going to have it for the entire flight. And believe me, it makes the MD-80 feel like a whole different airplane. So what's interesting for today then is obviously going to be the changes in the uh, sounds. But also, we are flying on a pretty busy Watson route here, going from Zurich towards Berlin. Now, let's take a quick look into the flight plan to see what we're about to do there. And um, this is our plan from Zurich to Berlin. And we are planning a flight level 320. Plan fuel for the flight is 7.7. .7. However, due to the event going on, I've added a little bit more and we're sitting on the ramp at 8.4 tons of fuel. So that is what we have with us today. Then, um, apart from that, we have programmed the FMC, we have uplinked our route over here, and um, I have requested PDC already using the um, Hoppy ACA system. However, it doesn't look like, I, like I've actually received a response to that. No, I haven't. The load sheet is here. In other words, our boarding is complete. So what we're going to do, I'm quickly going to finish the setup of the flight deck, which was, I would say, two thirds done already before I noticed that little YouTube issue <laughs> that prevented you guys from seeing what was actually going on. Um, so normally we'd be in the queue for a pushback in five minutes. We aren't going to make that, that is for sure. But um, anyway, we're just going to take the time and uh, that's going to be it. Okay, um, then let's go on and actually do a departure briefing. But before that, I'm quickly going to do my uh, transponder setup here. And we are going to be the Swiss. Seven Lima Hotel, and yeah, that's uh, pretty much that part. Okay, so let's do our briefing then. Threats for the departure. Well, obviously, um, it is going to be quite busy, and I'm not all that familiar with Zurich, so we are going to take the taxi slowly. Also, I keep running into a bug with the. Um, I keep running into a bug with the nose wheel steering in this plane when I'm going faster than three knots then the plane is just not going to steer correctly uh, so we might have to take it slow in the turns apart from that 
the airplane is in a good shape, the weather is good, and that should be mostly it. So let's go ahead and do a quick route check there. We're going from Zurich towards Berlin with the Degas departure, Zulu 1 Ed Targo, Direct Tigny, Tango 279 Tarmap, Tango 278 classed off with a classed off transition, and the ground distance is 460 miles. So, left seat takeoff, runway 10, flaps 8, noise abatement, procedure number 1 here in Zurich, and that's mostly it. So, let's go ahead and have a quick look into the charts for today's flight. And as always, I am using Sim Toolkit Pro to display my Navigraph charts, so here we go. That's unfortunately something that the EFB of the MD80 can still not do at this point. So, starting with the parking charts then, we are currently located... ...down here, in um, Alpha 2. Pushback is going to be into November. Taxi out then straight at, most likely via November. And... Um, ...then Echo 7, Lima, Cross Romay 1-4... ...sorry, Cross Romay 1-6, and then a Lima 9 departure from Romay 1-0. Then, looking into the charts, we actually still have to see this is still set up for a different runway than expected. So, why don't we go ahead and call for ATC clearance and secure our new pushback slot as well. I had arranged one with them, but obviously I'm gonna have to drop it due to that little hiccup with the streaming software. And I promise you, I am going to make a report there to the um, developers of the streaming software. That, that stuff doesn't happen again. Direct delivery, good evening, Swiss 7 Lima Hotel information, echo request clearance to Berlin. Okay, stand by. Well, that's fine. I would like to know our sit though, because, um, obviously, I have planned, I plan for a different runway as they're using a different runway in real life at the moment. Anyway, let's go ahead and do the load sheet real quick. We have zero fuel of 52.909, in other words, 53 tons. So 53 tons, that's as planned, and that's a gross weight of 61.4. And if we look into this, we have 61.1, 300 kilos taxi, that looks good, acknowledge that. Then 53.0 in the gross weight down here as well. Okay, so 61037 is going to be our takeoff weight. Uh, let's just actually calculate 61.1. That gives us a little bit of um, room there. And that is a uh, flap 12.5 takeoff at 44 degrees. So delivery is going to be at 115 kilograms per day. We have uh, information dot com. Okay, at 44 degrees, the ART can go off. Okay, perfect. And then we have take our speeds 134, 138, 147. Let's go ahead and put those in. So 134, then 138 and 147. Okay, 147, and then we can put 147 up. Zurich, uh, ground, uh, KLM 880, at uh, uh, Alpha 48, Melchior, Delta. Okay, it would just be nice if we actually got our um, clearance now, so that we can brief the sit. Okay, um, well, as we're still waiting, let's go ahead and start reading some checklists then. So, uh, cockpit crew checklist, DFDR set, AHRS alignment checked, FMS set, emergency lights, test arm, no smoking on, windshield any eyes on. Um, engine sync is off, store warning tested, air conditioning supply on, position and strobe light, 
both fire protection tested, TRI tested, fuel quantity 7700 required, 8300 on board. And we have four pumps on. Altimeters 1021 reading 1400 cross checked, fuel shot off closed, cabin pressure auto, cockpit crew checklist complete. Uh, And jet noise, no spill steering, no bug, I fly it almost every day, no issues there. Okay, uh, could you tell me how you are doing it then? Um, because mine, I've assigned the um, standard nose wheel steering from the um, simulator and mine just gives me very, very limited nose wheel steering. So um, if you can shed any light into how you assigned yours, I would greatly appreciate that. Okay, um, just trying to uh, talk to delivery once again, um, seeing how long the pushback delay is going to be. I seriously hope not too long. Anyway, in the meantime, let's go ahead and start up the APU, and then hopefully by the time we are ready, um, Okay, APU is starting up. That's gone. That's done. Okay, let's quickly talk to the passengers. Ladies and gentlemen, very good evening from the cockpit. This is your captain speaking. My name is Emmanuel in the name of Swiss Air. I'd like to welcome you all on board our MD. Oh, one moment. That should be first. Swiss 70 motor, go ahead. AFA? The 7 Lima Hotel cleared to Berlin via runway 10, Degas to Echo Departure, climb 5000, squad 1000. The 7 Lima Hotel, Roger, in 5 minutes we'll be ready. Okay, let's get rid of the ground equipment so that we will actually be ready in 5 minutes. We don't want to promise him anything wrong, do we? Okay, handling by Swiss port, please. Then, um, quickly gotta put that departure in. So, runway 10, Degas to Echo Departure. Of course, it's always the other one than what you select. But anyway, um, that's not gonna be a problem today. Then, um, let's have a quick look into the departure charts. So, sit, we are looking for the Degas to Echo, on of departure. Hello, Captain, we are ready for pushback. Okay, so, um, for the routing, straight at 2.1 DME, that's the close 2 point, or 2500. Then it is going to be a left hand turn, slight left turn, Zulu Hotel 502, about 4000 feet, Kolo, Zulu Hotel 504, about 5000, Zulu Hotel 725, above 7000, and then towards Degas above flat level 80. That's what we have in here. Speed max 250 below 100, and. Let's see, we contact Steric Departure when instructed, 129, uh, sorry, 125955. We should climb to 5000, that's as expected. So we got 5000 in the window and just uh, walk of 1000 as assigned. Okay, that should be it. And with that, we are pretty much ready to go. With seven Lima Hotel request startup. Uh, of course, someone's talking over it.
everyone talking over one another today, it seems. And he answers the other one first. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove all the services. GPU gone. Doors are all closed. And with that, we are pretty much ready to go. Bis seven Lima Hotel, ich werde start up. One to one, decimal seven five zero and confirm startup with books with seven Lima Hotel. Roger. That's interesting. Never heard that in real life yet. Normally, delivery always gives startup clearance and then transfers you to the um, ground controller who is going to um, give you the pushback clearance. Normally, you don't do it like um, push and start approved. Friedrich April, good morning. Swiss 7 Lima Hotel, stand Alpha 2, the request. Okay, so we've got to wait. That's fine. Um, Amir is asking in the chat, gentlemen, I have a question. How can I get the weather radar to work in the PMDG? Um, you can't. The API that's currently available to developers is insufficient to do anything like a proper weather radar. So for that reason there is no weather radar simulated at the moment. And RIS, uh, when will there be shared cockpit for the 737? I have no idea. Robert Randasso said in an earlier update that he does plan on it, however at the moment. The 70 motel push start approved. Okay, well. Let's do that first then. And the before start checklist. Parking rack and pressure, set and checked pneumatic pressure, 42 psi. Engine ignition set A, tank pumps on. Seat belts on, anti collision lights on, APU norm Econ, norm, air conditioning supply off, galley power off, pneumatic cross feeds. I keep forgetting those in this airplane. Okay, pneumatic cross feeds open, first leave aside, idle before start checklist complete, break off. Commencing push. All engines clear, start at will. Okay, and off we go, finally. Goodwin, hi, nice to see you here. At what time am I flying? Um, it's real time minus one hour. I've set it back a little bit so that we can get a little bit of daylight and the sunset rather than doing an entire flight in the dark. Then a couple guys asking there, um, why does my airline do the callouts gear up and then positive rate? Uh, that's for a double confirmation. It would be too easy for the pilot flying to just say gear up by the moment he hears the um, positive rate call and therefore we do it the other way around. Okay, we are beyond the line, so let's go ahead and start engine number two. So, listen to those sounds, okay? I've got the FTSM Plus sound pack installed. So, listen to that. Start of the proof, QNH1021, I can fix it here. 
Got travel two flying Juliet for crossing contact tower one one eight zero one. Got N two, N one, oil pressure. Good evening, FedEx two Victor requesting as you start. FedEx two four Victor eight one hello. Got it two FedEx one zero two one. Approved FedEx one zero two one FedEx two Victor. That's FedEx four zero Okay, good start number two, starting one. So soccer Sulu, spaghetti frequency. Um, and two, all press. Clear the runway one zero at Juliet. And one. Hello, taxi straight ahead, Ryan Juliet. Okay, Alpha one one. Alpha one one straight ahead, uh, so soccer Sulu, thank you. That's parking brake. By the way, open that window, listen to that. Okay, then I forgot something earlier on, so let's quickly do that. Flaps 12.5. That's set and the CG. Just need to check on that real quick, making sure that we got the correct takeoff trim setting. So, takeoff 13.3. Here we go, 13.3. Steam, yeah, the entire sounds are basically new over here because I've got the um, additional sound pack from FTSM Plus installed. So the entire thing sounds different and in my opinion a lot better than the um, standard version. Okay, so the tuck is gone, then let's do the flight controls. Up, down, neutral, left, right, neutral, and the rudders, left, right, and neutral. Okay then, um, after start checklists, electrical system checked, galley power on, engine ignition off, heater and static heaters on capped, any eyes off, air conditioning supply auto, door lights out and hydraulic system on and high. After start checklist complete. Hand signal is received. Swiss 7 Lima Hotel, request taxi. November Echo 7, hold short runway 34, Swiss 7 Lima Hotel. Okay, that's pretty much straight ahead and into there. Oh, config. And as always, I forgot something. That's the reason we do this stuff. And the spoilers I also forgot. Okay, one more time. Why flaps? Do that once more. Oh boy, okay, we've got to stop the play. If we can't solve that stuff, I totally forgot about all of this. Okay, move, 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 move. We're looking for 12 and a half. Here we go. Okay, let's try that once more. Here we go. No more warnings. Perfect. Okay, so straight ahead and then half right.
Das ist Ramlima Hotel, Cross Rame 24, Sierra Mana war ja Lima. Okay, so here we go. That was um, interesting to call it that way. But yeah, that's exactly what you are supposed to do. If something doesn't work, then just stop the airplane, take your time, and um, do your troubleshooting. In our case, we had forgotten more than one thing, so um, obviously with a better pre-flight, that should not have been a problem. Um, but yeah, that stuff happens in real life as well, so if it does, then we are simply going to um, stop the airplane, figure out the problem, and especially with the takeoff warning system, if you are unable to figure out the problem, it is a mandatory return to the gate because chances are that something will be wrong with your airplane and with your um, and uh, with your maintenance issues. Okay, we're cleared across the runway, strobes are on, clear right, and we can't see anything on the left anyway at this angle. That's what, just what we gotta live with. And KSAHAN, auto brake RTO. Okay, let's see, did I forget that? No, the auto brake is an RTO. That's not the problem. And Artifasar, I'm using the um, honeycomb cross levers, the Bravos. And jet noise, North Coast steering sensitivity, default reactivity 75. Okay, I'll give those settings a try next time, because mine right now is definitely not uh, strong enough. Bobonate is move on, Swiss 7 Lima Hotel, bye bye. Okay, 118 is no one. Version calling, so again. Then, taxi checklist. TRI ART, set and off. V box, set, flight guide system. Set, flight controls, tested, flap slats, we've got them at 12 and a half and extended. Takeoff briefing and data. Okay, let's review that. It's going to be a left seat takeoff on runway 10. Flaps 12 and a half, noise abatement procedure number one. Initial climb 5,000 feet, acceleration at 3,400 feet. Um, the sit is pretty much straight out with a slight left turn and we don't have any specials for the emergencies. Straight ahead and a slight left turn onto heading of 045, climbing 5,000 feet and that is going to take us out over Lake Constance and over there we can safely work our procedures. Contact departure when advised by the tower and that is pretty much it. Taxi checklist complete. So let's get up a couple of those lights. So, we are number 5 in the sequence, took okay, about 2 minutes per aircraft, so we're looking at a total of, um, I would say maybe 10 minutes delay here at the holding point, but that could be much worse. Watch the go around up there. Okay, in the meantime, um, we do this. Standby instruments bright as well. And that should mostly be it. Um, 
I wonder if they have any dependencies here in Zurich between the arrivals on Romeo 1. Oh, yeah, of course. Well, no. I actually don't know. But there might very well be some dependencies slowing the entire departure procedures down as well. So, if we have a look at the airport chart and um, quickly check that out. Basically, this is the configuration they are using. Rame 10 is for the, for the departure, so that one over here. And Rame 14 is for the landings. So I figure if they have a go-around up there and a departure up here, then there is a potential for the aircraft colliding in the air, and therefore they will probably not be using um, independent operation. That's the reason why it says on the ATIS as well to that they have dependent merging operation over here. So that's not really that important for the uh, pilots, but nonetheless, it's uh, good to keep in mind. Tower, Year zero, A320, that's a very good question. What would you say? How realistic can we fly in Microsoft Flight Simulator from 1 to 10? Honestly, that depends a lot on how you perceive realistic flying. Um, if it is the correct operation and application of procedures in an airliner, then you can probably do 8. Now, that is obviously only taking into account pushing the buttons and not taking into account um, doing the multi-crew operation. However, if we are looking into a flying point of view, on a scale of 1 to 10, I would give it maybe something around 5 or 6. And that's not too much, if we're honest, but... Um, You know, there's a lot of limitations still in simulators, starting with um, using homemade joysticks, which just don't provide a realistic feeling, which is something that we um, just have to accept as a given point. Then, on top of that, the handling characteristics in Max of Flight Simulator are not perfect. I mean, X-Plane is said to be much better, even though I am not an X-Plane guy. However, it is fair to say that the um, handling characteristics in X-Plane are probably a bit more realistic. Harry Kane, are you using DirectX 12 or 11 and what settings are you using? I am using DirectX 11 and honestly I haven't changed the settings too much. I've just found one that um, didn't give me crashes to desktop and I'm sticking to that ever since. I'm, I'm really not too much of a settings guy, if I'm honest. Um, for me, settings are set and forget. I'm not experimenting with them. I've just, you know, set my um, stuff up, and and that's been it. Um, I didn't touch them, basically, ever since I first set my Max of Flight Simulator up and uh, changed my graphics card, like, a year and a half ago. Ever since then, I didn't really touch my settings at all anymore. So yeah, my apologies, but uh, I can't actually tell you too much about that. Okay, we're gonna remember that, 125950, because I do want to do a little bit of hand flying after takeoff, so presetting as many things as possible is definitely going to help. Nathan, hello, hey, will you need to reset the time? Um, nah, not really, I've set it to one hour earlier than real life on purpose because I wanted to catch the sunset and a little bit of daylight here before we are flying into the night. And Hurricane, I just asked because you are actually streaming your game while you have no low frame rates or stutters. Well, to be honest, I do have a couple of them. 
um, the simulator could run better. You probably don't see it that well. You probably don't see it that well over the um, live stream, which is something that I quite appreciate. But yeah, um, especially in the MD80, I do get quite a bit of micro starters. The performance is, um, well, somewhere in the level of a Phoenix, I would say. And that is unfortunately not too good in terms of performance. And Digero A320, for which airline am I flying? Uh, my airline doesn't want me to tell, I do apologize for that, so um, I can't say. Um, need one, are you using a HOTAS, and if so, which one? I do have the Thrustmaster Warthog, but I'm only using it when I'm flying aircraft that have a side stick, or a stick in any other kind of view. Apart from that, I am normally flying the um, Thrustmaster Boeing yoke together with the Honeycomb Bravo thrust levers and the Thrustmaster Pendular pedals. That is my uh, setup for any aircraft that has a yoke attached to it. And for aircraft with a stick, I'm using the um, Warthog instead of the Boeing um, yoke. So we'll and, uh, Daniel, have I started a new type rating on the A330? Not yet, in June. In June I'm going to start it. So I'm actually doing my last couple of uh, weeks on the 737 now. And um, yeah, that's going to be it then on the 73. Thereafter it's going to be Airbus. Hurricane, no, unfortunately not the nail. And Daniel, oh yes, you bet I am excited about it. Whole different operation, whole different everything. Um, yeah, it's just pretty much everything being different. Um, so it's going to be a whole new life, and I seriously hope I'm going to find some time to do a couple of videos every now and then. But um, we'll see. And Fox Bravo Tango Sierra Charlie, I spent five years on the 737. Um, yeah, pretty much exactly five years, honestly. Um, I started my type rating in April 2018. Okay, the next guy is going. Then it's just going to be one ahead of us. And uh, will I change my channel name to A330 Driver? Honestly, that is something that I do consider. Um, but I'm not 100% sure about it yet. Um, changing a channel name is always something that confuses people. And um, I've just got to find a good way to transition it. And honestly, I might even start a second channel um, for the Airbuses and keep this one for the Boeings. I'm unsure about that. Um, it's all stuff that I haven't really thought about too much yet, so it's just something that we will have to see for the future. And Jacob, is that going to change things with PMDG? Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, PMDG typically doesn't throw anybody out just because they aren't actively flying the type anymore that they are advising on. Obviously, it's taken into account that um, I will not have first-hand expertise anymore, but um, nonetheless, five years' experience is still five years' experience. So, no, I don't think anything's going to change there. And Thies Sternberg, hi, I'm the FedEx behind you. Well, hello there. Okay, one guy is going up there. Probably another go around. By the looks of it. Yeah, another go around. What? What's going on today? Why are there so many people going around? The reason for go around felt uh, deployed the uh, 
And fly to live. If you don't want to answer, I'm fine. But do you finance your A330 type running by yourself or do you get help from your new company if you have one? Um, the company is going to pay for that. So the type writing is going to be paid for by the company and then um, they have a bonding scheme. So if I leave in the first two years, then I have to pay something back depending on how long I've been there. But yeah, the uh, company pays for the um, type writing. Really, it is. Um, I know it's a thing these days to make pilots pay for type ratings, but um, honestly, that should never be considered the norm. I know a lot of people do it these days, and as a cadet pilot, you sometimes just don't have a chance. I've been lucky, I've got a bonding, and I paid just 5,000 euros for my type rating, but I know that cadets often pay up to 30,000 euros for a type rating. But um, that should not be considered the norm and it should never become the norm. Honestly, you don't do a type rating for your personal fund, you do it for your ally. Imagine somebody working in a bank having to pay for his own training with the software the bank is using. That would be, well, that, that'd be nuts, wouldn't it? And Daniel, no, I'm not staying with my current operator. I will be changing airlines. Will of the Dude, hello. What have I missed? Well, you've missed, uh, first of all, me messing up my YouTube software and uh, missing the start of the live stream by 20 minutes. Then you have missed us going over to the runway. But probably the most important point here is that you missed is that I have the FTSM Plus sound pack for the MD80 series. So we have a whole new set of sounds that I'm going to talk about a little bit during this live stream. But if you are just looking for a short version of that uh, sound update, then I will have a video coming up on that over the course of the next couple of days. So you will be catered even if you don't want to watch an entire live stream. And Kyle, which sound pack? It is the FTZIM Plus. You can find uh, that guy's Patreon. Actually, I'm going to leave a link to that in the uh, video description below after the live stream. And um, I believe the sound pack is something like five or six euros, maybe. And it really enhances the fun in the MD80 a lot. It is a pity that we need these kind of things because the MD-80 is already quite an expensive airplane. But it is quite a good airplane as well, we have to say. Um, if the thing sounds all right, you will see that in um, today's live stream. If the um, thing sounds good, then you will be really surprised on how much fun this airplane actually is. But it needs a good sound pack in order to be able to really enjoy it. Hi Madeline, nice to see you here. And uh, no worries if you can't um, No worries if you can't watch this one. You can always watch the repeat and you know where to find me as well, Madeline. Daniel, that's a very good question there. Um how happy am I out of ten with the PMDG 737 overall at the moment? Well, I'd give it an eight. Um there could be a couple improvements every here and there, and the developers already know which ones these are. It's all in their um, tracking software. And uh, obviously the EFB is a thing. Um, with an EFB, I would definitely put a 9 into it. So without the EFB for now, I'm happy 8 out of 10 with a PMDG 737. And um, fly to live. Will you do some Atlantic crossings with the A330? Honestly, mostly. Most routes will be to the US and Caribbean with a little bit of um, Africa and Indian Ocean in it as well. Then the one true Mongolid. Is the pilot shortage a problem in the U EU and as bad as it is in the US? Uh, not really. There are sufficient pilots available in the EU, 
However, not sufficient experienced pilots. Um, there are just not enough experienced pilots. However, the airlines could simply solve this if they hired people right out of flight school instead of asking for a thousand hours up front. If they did that, they could solve all their issues. However, it would of course take a substantial financial investment to um, get all these people Victor, from flight school in, into the air and flying on the airlines. And at the moment the airlines are not willing to make that investment, but rather go out and um, try to see if they can somehow find some uh, other pilots. And Villa the Dude, what are we waiting for? Well, basically the two guys up front there. I don't really know what's going on at the moment here. Um, they just don't seem to get any departures out right now. Let's actually ask the tower. Direct tower low, Swiss South and Lima Hotel, ready. Start, uh, delivery. The next guy going around. What's going on here today? This is the third go around since we're standing at the runway. What is going on? Triton Victor, go around after go around. Follow Mr. Plus procedure. Contact one two five basic one nine five zero. Contact three seven Victor. I have a feeling something is um. I really have no idea what's going on at the moment, why we're waiting so much. Um, somehow it seems the operation here in Zurich has just broken down. And Andrea, better check the taxi fuel if it is already gone. Yeah, I am having an eye on that. It's 7.9 in the tank right now, and um, luckily we loaded those 15... Luckily we loaded those 15 minutes extra. If we have a look in the flight plan... Hi, Julia. I'm sure Here we go. 7.7 .7 was the block, and that included 270 kilos of taxi fuel, so we can go down to 7.5. However, what we also need to keep an eye upon over here is the arrival fuel. We're at 4.4 right now, and um, the reserves are 3.2. So that leaves us with roughly 15 minutes of holding by the time we get to Berlin. But yeah, that's something that we are keeping an eye on at the moment. Oh my three two clear for takeoff. Okay. Are they are they changing runways then? Is that the reason why we have those delays? Okay, everybody's being sent you back to delivery. Yeah, I really have a feeling they're changing runways at the moment. The 7 Lima Hotel I found. Uh, one to one nine or two five. Is there any chance you can get us out in time that we can make the arrival event in Berlin? Yeah, that just means we gotta go in five minutes. Okay. From a three two, they can't be serious, please. Three two five seven four November departure. Delivery allows with suddenly hotel. That can't be true. That seriously can't be true. They can't be changing runways in the middle of an event like that. Suddenly hotel, go ahead. Seven Lima Hotel, information calls re cleared by runway 32, decades 4, November 
Uh, Maitri 2, Degas 4 November, Swiss 7 Lino Hotel. Any chance to get out via runway 10 as we're gonna miss the arrival slot in Berlin and we've got 200 people watching on a live stream and we've been standing here for 15 minutes. Swiss 7 Lino Hotel, negative. Gotcha. That can't be true. Okay, about the next tower, Thirty-two. And what did he say? Degas for November. Eighteen one seven in the that just can't be true. That just can't be true that they're doing this. Cars with Semley Motel. Via runway 10, hold truck Juliet, and we'll need 5 to 10 minutes of the holding point for a rebriefing and new take up performance with 70 Nota. Okay, onto the runway and, off the, and hold truck of Juliet. This is a disgrace, honestly. Why are they doing that in the middle of an event? They're screwing everybody right now. They're just screwing all the pilots. And for what? I'll try three fourth with some Lima Hotel. So now we've got 7.8 in the tanks, in other words, we're gonna run oh, a minimum fuel towards Berlin. And then in Berlin, we are of course going to be sent into the um, holding and we will be sent off the run and we will be sent on extended delay vectors again because Berlin is also going to uh, run totally full. And with that, we are pretty much screwed and we'll probably have to divert. That's just. That simply sucks, honestly. Why do they do shit like that? And up to cut. Yep, they um, changed the runway and now everybody is screwed. Okay, hold shot of the runway is what they said. Hold shot of the runway is what we do. Let's see if we can do a little bit of performance. So, runway 3 2, we'll just take calm winds. And that should be good. Calculate. Flap 6 takeoff, 50 degrees. Okay, so flap six. Good evening, uh, FedEx 24 Victor holding short on the one. Flap six. Then we've got the um, Degas for November departure. Okay, Degas for November. Okay. 
and straight ahead. Actually, you know what? Let's do that right for the first time. Um. Before I quit the land, kill me if I go. Vegas for November, legs. Straight ahead, two miles from Cloton, right turn onto 329er, which leads us to the 40 knee point above 3500 feet. Then a right turn, maximum 210 knots. So Why don't we have a speed restriction then? Okay, 074, inbound Zulu, hotel 503. So that track over here is incorrect. Um, yeah, we'll just stop the turn and then 074 inbound. Um, cross that above 6000, and there is a note over there. Continue runway 10, hold your Juliet. Confirm crossing 3 4 proof with assembly motor. Okay, brake released. Starbury, please name call out 37 Victor, the final line of people. Can I press number to call out 37 Victor? Okay, so hold your Juliet, that means basically at the end of the terminal on the left side there. That just can't be. We're off block for over half an hour now. Okay, flap six, so let's get them back. There we go, flap six. Okay, hold for Juliet, that should be next on the left. Left on the kilo is the semi motor. The kilo is one further, so not this one, but the next one to the left then. And that is one, two, three, four aircraft, five aircraft in front of us. Again. That's just. It can't be. Come on, airplane. Get me taxiing. Tower, good and all, big love, thumbs up, two Lima November, ILS 3 4. And once again, we are at the long end of the useless queue that they could have avoided without a runway change like that. One, two, three, four, five. This is unbelievable. This is absolutely unbelievable. And this is just a. Uh, 28190 with you, uh, 8 mile final for runway 34. 
Yeah, <laughs> steam pedals and taxi simulator. Yeah, two, you name it. Uh, two, eight, one, nine, oh. I mean, we aren't even going to make it to Berlin for the event. We should have been there an hour before the end of the event. This is... That just can't be. So, fuel is 7.7 .7 now. 7.5, I believe we said. Let's have a look into the flight plan. So, what's the minimum? 7.5. And that is minimum, without any reserves, and we're flying into a busy event. And Orgel Flirter 69. Well, first of all, interesting username. Wouldn't it have made more sense to get all the departures out and then change the room if the limitations allow it? Yes, absolutely. Let's see if we can get some lights on over here. Goodwin, what happens in real life when you need to refuel again? Do you have to go back to the terminal area or is there a stop closer by at big airports? No, you have to go back to the gate, your flight plan expires, you have to get a new flight plan, a new slot, and typically if you have to return to the gate, that is like an hour of delay. First of all, because there's simply not going to be a refueler available as you aren't planned for it. So you've got to wait for a free slot for the fueling. So if you return to the gate, at least an hour delay. And honestly, if we've got to do that today, then, um, just, uh, then I'm just going to cancel the flight. Three, two. And listen to that. Three, Once uh, again, they are um, uh, very close to go-arounds on the runway. Not only that we heard three go-arounds previously, before they changed the runway, but now again, the guy gets landing clearance, you hear on the readback in the background that um, the airplane's calling out the minimums for the pilot. Then just now, guy's asking if he's clear to land. The tower says, yeah, previous is about to vacate, clear to land. Um, I don't know what they're doing here, but it seems... Yeah. And um, question there, how much fuel could you save by lowering the cost index in that situation? Honestly, not a lot, maybe 20 or 30 kilograms. Um, you aren't going to save a lot of fuel if you had a halfway decent cost index at first. I know, the cost, the rate. Look at that. So us three over here, the two FedExes and me, are pretty much the um, same guys that have been standing on the Romeo 1-0 already. So how many departures did they get out in, the, in that half an hour? Ten aircraft? Maybe? At best, ten aircraft? Why would you change Romeo in an event like this? And Beluga, can you taxi with one engine out for saving fuel? 
Yes, you could. Um, however, I have no idea how a crossbleed stud works in the MD80. That's the reason why I'm not doing it. In the 737, in a case like this, um, yes, I did already shut an, shut an engine down during taxi. Well, rather during extended waiting periods at the runway. I have done that already. So, we're at 7.6. 7.5 uh, uh, is the limit. Let's do a little bit of mathematics. So we've got a fuel flow of um, 800 kilograms per hour. So 800 kilograms divided by 60 minutes is 13 kilograms per 13 kilograms per um, minute. In other words, 100 kilos that we can burn divided by 13 gives us something like seven minutes. In seven minutes, if we are not airborne, we have to return to the gate because we are running out of fuel. And I loaded up 8.4 tons. We burned 800 kilograms now. Line up, uh, wait, uh, runway 32, uh, for 89 echo. Cold beer, why even change the runway when the winds are calm? Well, that's the question we gotta ask ATC. On two zero two two five, Swiss seventy miniature. Hello, Swiss seventy miniature. Hello, Swiss seventy miniature. Ready. Set. Let's see if we can finally go now. Swiss Family Motel request. Family Motel, could you just confirm what the reason was for the runway change earlier on? Okay, that is understood. Okay, they did it for noise abatement. They literally fucked at least 20 people for noise abatement. I mean, seriously? Because they want to stick to realism? I mean, what the hell? That can't be true. That just can't be true. So yeah, Andrea, you've been right. Maybe some kind of curfew for a specific runway. But yeah, why they... The assembly motel behind the departing 737 line of MA32 behind. Yeah. Uh, it is totally beyond me why on um, what's probably the uh, busiest event on Vatsim you need to do this and fuck so many people. The runway change has a backlog, a backlog of at least half an hour if you have traffic like this. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? For realism purposes, yeah. Well, anyway, after we are out of this, I'm done with Zurich. Probably not gonna fly here again in the long term.
Okay, fuel is down 7,550. In other words, we've got the last 50... Oops, no, not you. So we've got the last 50 kilos to take off and then we're flying on exactly minimum fuel. Okay, just a quick check that we've actually done everything. The flaps are reset. Deep trim. is reset. The speeds are in. And the departure frequency is pre-selected. Okay. That should be everything we need for this. Before takeoff checks. Trim, zero, zero, set, fuel heat, off, APU air, off, pneumatic cross feeds, closed, brake temperature checked, engine ignition both, EOAP checked, before takeoff check is complete. With 70 more telemetry 2, clear for takeoff. Okay. Timing. Stabilized. Set takeoff thrust. Nice, we get airborne, we get a traffic advisory. Departure, good evening, the 70 Motel, 4,825,000, take us one of them. Okay, flaps up. Slats are tracked. Direct departure, good evening, the 70 Motel, maintaining 5,000, take us to collection for November. No. Okay, one, two, five, nine, that's five, it seems. Direct departure, good evening, Swiss 7 Lima Hotel, 5,000 feet, Degas, 4 November. Five, five, nine, zero, Swiss 7 Lima Hotel. That, another check. The 70 Motel Direct Degas High Speed Approved. Well, that is the least they can do. Okay, Degas, execute. Okay then, FMS override. Let's give it a bit of speed there. It's done that. And it's set. 
Passing 6 1, climbing 9 0 after takeoff track closed. Trans Central, uh, flight level 120, sky level 89 echo. That stuff, that stuff, that stuff. And this. Okay, half the takeoff checklist. Brake temperature is checked, landing gear up, no lights, flap slat, zero retracted, engine ignition off, fuel tank pumps on, altimeter 1013 set cross checked. Complete. Okay, vertical speed. Want to go altitude armed. Why is it not reducing thrust? The thing is going right into the overspeed. Speed mode? No. Okay, I don't know why it's doing that. Not a throttle off. Interesting. Why would the auto throttle not go into speed hold mode when the plane is no longer in Vina? Must be some sort of an MD80 thing, but um, they're gonna get it sorted. Come on, bring this speed down. The seven motor plus five double one two zero. Set, one to zero checked. Okay. Speed hold, auto throttle, EPR limit. Okay. So let's see that again. Now it's in EPR climb and One feet, feet of the line on the summit of the hotel. Okay, 70, Lima, the eastern flight level okay, 1. Got one to go. Then he's level 1 and 0 to 7 to Lima. Altitude capture. Let's see, this time it switched to speed mode, okay. Swiss radar get even in Swiss 7 in our hotel, level 117, climbing 120 in Mount Degas. Swiss 7 in our hotel, Swiss radar, the rear to say, climb flight level 240. Climb flight level 240, all Swiss 7 in our hotel. That. The hotel is 550. Speed holds. You can see I'm flying the airplane on. Um, Selected speed modes right now so that I get the highest possible airspeed out of it. As I really want to make it as quickly as possible towards. Um, okay, uh, what's that? What has just tripped off? Autopilot. Interesting. Why that? Relax I guess I don't need to arrival know. and hold a meeting as published. Okay. Uh, can um, I uh, leave uh, relax hold right now then be line to one? So let's and put some flat lights on. That's better. Okay, right, yeah. Two, two, three. Two, two, three. This is right out of the red sea. Climb flight level two, four, zero. Clear the negative two alpha arrival hold and army key as published. And everybody sent into the hold. I wonder how much longer the holdings have got because of their lovely idea to change the holdings. Okay, decent flight level 150. And Barry, uh, yeah, I do know I can clear the um, rudder standby light up there. But, um, Theoretically, it shouldn't be necessary to run out of it. But, um, I don't really know. So I think from now on it's about... <laughs> Not uh, next, but on the MDA, that's for sure. Roger, just for clarification, is that the time we expect until we can leave the hold or our expected approach time to when we receive the approach clearance? 
That's the time that you leave the home. Okay, okay 54. We are missing the arrival event by 23 minutes. That is um, unfortunate. And Clemens, if I'm accelerating further now, don't I get problems with the fuel? Yeah. I would be getting problems with the fuel. Um, the reason I'm doing it anyway is because we still have contingency fuel on board and we can burn that. So I'm kind of making the bet right now that we are not going to get extensive holding at Berlin anymore because we will be after the um, bulk of the arrival traffic. So I'm hoping that since we will be behind the bulk of the arrival traffic, we are not going to get the delay and therefore I'm using my contingency fuel up for the extra speed for the earlier arrival right now. However, if we do still get arrival delay, then obviously we will have burned our contingency. And therefore we will just have to divert earlier then. But we have to keep in mind the night curfew at Berlin at 11 as well. So um, we are quite close to the night curfew, the way we are flying right now. So, yeah. That's basically the equation that we have to think about right now. What's uh, worse, risking to get into the night curfew or using up the contingency fuel? And in my opinion, using the contingency fuel now for flying faster is probably the better choice. Okay, vertical speed. So that thing is still... Okay, here we go. Speed 320. Also, the difference in fuel usage shouldn't be that. So if we have a look into the flight plan, 3.2 is our reserves, and even though we departed with minimum, we still have 3.9 expected over here. Now in an MD-80 that is not a lot, that is maybe 10 minutes of extra that we have there. But I'm more than willing to sacrifice those 10 minutes. Okay, that call might have been for us. So yeah, this is the typical pilot life. You're always working against something. Right now we are simply working against time and fuel. But now imagine if we had not taken that extra fuel earlier on. That would have been, yeah, a return to the gate. I would never have thought that I would uh, have such a long taxi. At first I had planned to fly the flight in the opposite direction, into Zurich. I'm really glad I didn't do that right now. I am really glad. Okay, are we gonna get further climb now? Or not? And in the meantime, let's start using up that center tank fuel. To release our passengers as well. Okay, 7 Lima, contact the rain radar, 120.925. Turn right, come on. 120.925, Swiss 7, Hotel Bayern. Fine, schönen guten Abend, Swiss 7 in Hotel, Flight Level 240 in Bad Minga. Under Echo, Echo, can you repeat that one time, please? No. Or do I Echo? Echo, 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 uh, Echo Delta Uniform Zero. Echo Delta Uniform Zero, specifically Hotel. Set 320, check. Okay, let's see if CPD LC works.
Challenge Test for Light Test and Equation. Connection, Notification, Echo Delta, Uniform. The AT for Departure, the right setting. Swiss Army Motel, Zurich Berlin. This Heavenly Motel, we are running quite late today. Any shortcuts available? This Heavenly Motel, stand by. So, this five Sunny Mike, turn right to Mardek. Turn right to Mardek, so this five Sunny Mike. Uh, the one true Mongolite. The stream kind of makes me not want to fly Vatsum in Europe. It seems more discombobulated than Vat USA, which is impressive given how much of a cluster Vat USA can be. Honestly, normally it's not that bad. Um, this was really the peak of how. This was really the peak of how not to do it. Um, doing a runway change in the middle of an event that always. Yeah, that just always gets totally um, cramped up. That's just something you shouldn't do on that. Thing. And the controllers shouldn't do it either. When I heard the reason, I was really... Um, when I heard the reason for the change that it was just due to compliance with the noise abatement, I was really short of freaking out because they know that they are basically screwing everybody with it. Sorry, my hold, in your limit. And yeah, changing runway like this is just, you shouldn't do that. Um, might be realistic. This assembly hotel, that was not for us. Ah, Golf Hotel, okay. That explains it. By the way, is it just me or is that thing climbing much too fast here? Doing two and a half thousand feet a minute, passing level 300 with a speed almost at the red line. That seems a little excessive to me. And Lazarus, is the aircraft too loud or is it just you? Um, honestly, it is just you, but the reason for that is um, that I'm using a sound mod now, which actually brings the airplane to a realistic volume. And I know a couple of people who have jump seated on the MD-80, and they confirmed that it is a really loud aircraft. Oh, lovely wind change. Oh, no, the auto photo tripped off. Okay, that was me again. Let's get a bit of that thrust off. This is, of course, the risk of what may happen if you're flying that close to the maximum speed. But I could swear there was a wind change just now. And Doc Trench, the um, sound mod. It, the sound mod is from FTSM Plus. Really recommendable. Um, no, press the wrong button. Can I disarm the auto lamp node somehow? <sighs> I'm messing up right now. Okay, let's do this slowly. First of all, fly the airplane. So, it's intercepting the flight level, it's maintaining the mark number. That Autoland arm that I just did shouldn't be a problem as far as I know. It would be nice to know if we can disarm that though. But we'll deal with that in a few moments. Anyway, for now, we just don't tune ILS frequencies and that the thing can't capture anything. Okay. Um, then the next thing. Cruise thrust limit is set, and then down here we have new ATC message. Let's see, menu, ACARS, current unit, Einrader. Okay, CPDLC is... CPDLC connection timeout. Okay. Anyway, that's it. 
So next thing, how do we get rid of the uh, um, auto lamp that I accidentally pressed? Assembly mod holder, good luck. Direct to the execute. Okay, arrival time 48. Okay, that saved quite something over here. That really saved quite something. I'm happy we could get that. Okay, step time. No, we are not going to do any. So. Selected point A2 and Vina. Okay, um... Then, let's see. Um, you know what? I don't know how to reset this, so let's just use the standard that you can use to reset everything. Okay. Yeah, autopilot, problem solved. Okay, so that's it. Um, then, let's quickly do the Chicas below, maximum range. Okay, perfect. Angular Bank 10, we should have done that earlier as well. And that's pretty much it. Okay, perfect. Now we're all set up. So, the only thing that I am quickly going to plan, it seems to me that VNAV is sometimes acting up a little bit on this plane, so let's quickly do the descent preparation here as well. Point A2334, that looks good, then we'll take 250 below flight level 100, and we can remove the other restriction. Um, then, forecast, level 310, level 200. 50 and level 100. Okay, let's step forward. Okay, 331 at 16. Then we need 340 at 17. Three four eight at fifteen and zero zero five at twenty. And here we go. Let's quickly verify the wrong way in use over at Berlin as well. Take off, standard, request, pages, echo delta, delta, bravo. And we are looking for the arrival latest descent. And fly to live, you could actually make it in time to Berlin according to the estimated time and route on your stream. Yeah, at maximum speed we might be able to make it just about. But obviously they are going to slow us down eventually. So let's see, ATIS. Berlin Brandenburg Information Kilo, Metric time 1920, Automated Weather Message, Expect Vectoring, ILS Approach, Romney New 07 left and 07 right, after the Kading 7 left, on the ground 1295, after the Kading 7 right, on the ground 1217, transition level 60, wind 340 at 4, cover temperature 5, tune age 1025. Okay. Then, while well, we've got it open... Landing... Berlin, drive... 
the one at the bottom. Three, four, zero, and four. The temperature is 445, five, 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 Okay, in right hand and 1.5 And 3.4 tons on arrival. So we are going to burn two tons, landing weight 56.5. Calculate. Okay. Let's actually calculate auto brakes low, see what see that what that gives us. Okay, perfect. So landing data for 58 tons, 57 tons, and that's what we need. Okay, perfect. And Mosoto! It is decided then, we're hauling beep. Cost index 999. Nine, nine. <laughs> That's exactly it. Um, I mean, it is the same that we would do in real life if um, we were running so late that the airline would have severe economical disadvantages from it. And severe economical disadvantages in this case means either a diversion because the actual closes or approaching three hours delay, so you would have to pay the EU261 compensation. And for that reason, um, yeah, the airline will make you redline the airplane. Then, fly to live, what's your current fuel burn, say, compared to the estimated from your briefing? Well, currently we're doing 3.2 tons per... Yeah, that's uh, 3,180 kilos per hour. And the flight plan has us planned at 3,000. So we're burning 200 kilos per hour more at the moment. Which is quite a bit. So for the arrival, we take pretty much what we've planned over here. Then quick check, top of his hand, 144 uh, nautical Jesus miles. Zero, and we're looking at... How much is that actually? 170 plus 28? Yeah, the top of the sense is not correct. Um, we're going to ignore that. Let's have a look into the arrival charts actually, in order to uh, make ourselves a plan and an idea of what we're going to do. So, number one, get me rid of all those Zurich charts. So I hope that I don't have to fly there again anytime soon. Approach, 07 right, 07 left, and in here we've got the cast off 7 left transition, and we might have the cast off 7 right as well, over here, perfect. So we'll start planning 07 right, and then see what they're going to do with us. We need 109.7. And the course is 065. And 065. Here we go. Minimum 352. So 360 is selected. Okay, so, approach briefing then. Threats for the arrival, yeah, overspeeding the airplane as well. Th that's happened anyway already. If it happens again, the inspection will be done anyway. Um, yeah, then let's go ahead and um, do the FMC stuff. 
So we have 250 below flutter, 100, maximum speed is in, forecast page is filled in. We don't have any fixed rings in this airplane. And for the arrival, we are heading towards Rudak right now and then pick up the Glasdorf 07 right transition. That's from Glasdorf down here, Delta Bravo 582, Delta Bravo 572, maximum 220 above six, uh, flight level 60. Then Delta Bravo 562 below flight level 70. And that's in. Okay, then we proceed basically via the downwind, Delta Bravo 567, 557, TEPCO, uh, TEPCO above 3000. From there we start the ILS approach, from 07 right, at TEPCO, 3000 feet, 3 degree glide, final altitude at 4 miles, 1420, which we have in here as well, down to the minimum 352, which is pre-selected, and then in case of a missed approach, climb and runway track, maximum 3000 feet, at 2.70 BBI, turn right, radial 360, class of inbound to the VOR, climate of 4000. Okay, we've got BBI 2, and then we've got Killer Lima Fox at 183, that's close enough for me. Climate of 4000, which is correct as well. For the runway itself, we have 4 kilometers, and we can vacate Mike 6 or Mike 7. Mike 7 would be preferred, but depending if it's high, rom high intensity runway operations or not, we might have to decide on that. Anyway, for now, auto brakes minimum is going to do, and we are going to do a flap 28 landing. And for that flap 28 landing, we need, let's see, um, 2860 meters. So that should be nice to vacate at Mike 7 and then taxi to the gate. And that should pretty much be it. Any questions? No? Very good. So yeah, that's um, pretty much that stuff done. So now, finally, we can relax a little bit for at least a couple of minutes. At least a very couple of minutes, okay. Well. Hello there. I kind of like the overview of the cockpit here. The uh, MD-80 cockpit is just... Honestly, in, in terms of the instrument arrangements, it is probably one of my favorites. Because you have the electronic flight instruments, but you have them mixed with the steam gauges. And that's my personal favorite, to be honest. Alright, anyway. I will be back in... 30 seconds. Just got to take a very small break here. So they are going offline. Fucking hell. Sorry guys, I'm a little bit pissed right now. Um, this is just... Now you can see what the guys at Zurich 
did by doing that runway change, they basically fucked everybody who wanted to fly behind, uh, who wanted to fly between the two cities where you would normally have that event. And um, because they wanted their runway change and because they wanted their, we want to go most realistic, they basically fucked all the pilots. I mean, why on earth would you do that? And now we have the exact result that on a two hour 30 event where we've had two hours for a one hour flight we can't make the flight with ATC. That's just... That's incredible. That's just incredible. We should have been on the ground by now. And I should be sleeping because in 28 hours I have an, a 12 hour early flight shift. So yeah, that's what we're getting. And fly to live. Is this the first time I get mad at a Watson controller? Not the first, but one of the very few. Like remember that live stream in Bogota where they changed Romes four times? There I got mad as well. Um, apart from that, it doesn't happen too often that I'm getting that mad at a controller. The thing why I'm getting so mad at the guys in Zurich is that there was just no reason to change the runway. They say noise abatement and they change it in real life. Okay, then they know how busy it gets at their event. They know how much backlog they are causing if they do a runway change in the middle of the event. They know what they're doing to the pilots. They know how they are basically fucking all the pilots backwards, if you know what I mean. And yet they do it just for the sake of their personal enjoyment and realism in terms of um, in terms of how you uh, run the airport in real life. Yeah, that is fine, but then just then just start the event by using runway 32 for the departures. If they did it realistic, they would have used runway 14 by the way in the beginning and not runway 10. Because when I did my flight preparation I checked on flight radar and I checked which runway was active and my apologies it wasn't runway 14, it was runway 16 they were using in real life and not runway 10. So they started unrealistic and then in the sense of realism they fucked like I don't know, 50 people? I mean, they are still working off the holding stacks that they caused earlier on. That is just total idiocracy, if you ask me. Um, that is just nonsense. They know what they are causing with a runway change like this, and yet they do it. And all of that on an event where Zurich is constantly and totally overwhelmed by traffic every Tuesday anyway. And then they do something like that. It doesn't make any sense. It literally doesn't make any sense. But I've learned my lesson. I'm not gonna fly there again. Because that is just... Yeah, you, you don't do that. That's not... No. Just no. Okay, anyway, I've had my five minutes of rage, so let's try to go back to normal flying. Um, how long actually until we're gonna have that thing on the ground? And we've got a new ATC message that's probably just gonna be the disconnect of the. Um, yeah, here we go. Service terminated, that was just CPNC. Expect. Okay, so. Um, 80 miles to Rodak, we want to be classed off flight level 100, so let's do a little bit of mathematics of how we're going to run the VNAV. Um, we've got to lose 22,000 feet, so times 3 is 66 nautical miles. We've got 28 here, so um, 
38 miles prior to Rudak, we need to start our descent. So that top of descent directly seems quite all right, if you ask me. But have a look at that arrival fuel there. Down to 3.4. 3.2 is our diversion fuel. So yeah, we are definitely burning a little bit more than we should. Ufram, hello, nice to see you in the chat over here. And Cornelius as well. Okay, for those of you who have joined later on and who are wondering about the sounds over here, I'm sure that most of you remember the Mad Dog as being pretty quiet in cruise. Now, I am using the FTSM Plus sound pack for the Mad Dog that you can get at um, FTSM's Patreon page for, I believe, $5.95 or $6.95 or something like that. And it really adds a lot to the Mad Dog. It is a totally different feeling in the plane if you have the sounds like we have them right now or if it is as quiet as it used to be. And Benjamin, were, have I ever been mad at air traffic control in real life? Um, in a single case, yeah. We've been flying to uh, somewhere in the Baltics and we have been in the Kaliningrad FIR talking to um, Kaliningrad on the radio and there was quite a major thunderstorm ahead and Obviously, we needed to deviate around that, but whenever we requested a heading, he denied the heading and said that we need to maintain on track. Obviously, we aren't going to fly through a thunderstorm, whatever air traffic control says. So, after he denied, like, the um, third or fourth request, I just used a little bit of the Russian language skills I have and basically said, like, oh, Blaird, we are, diver we are deviating now, heading, blah, blah. And after I told, after I used that uh, little Russian word there on the radio, basically he didn't um, say anything anymore. So then he just accepted that we deviated around the thunderstorms. I don't know if that had any consequences for the air traffic controller. Certainly, we didn't file a report for that. Um, we just continued along our way and didn't talk to that guy. Yet again except for the handoff to the next sector and that's been it and Mazoto, did you get an SU-27 escort? nope we didn't I mean the guy probably realized himself that he messed up when he declined an aircraft to fly around the thunderstorm whatever the reason I don't know but uh... yeah sometimes that happens um Ufran, <laughs> did you ever witness some childish behavior on the frequency? Yeah, well, just monitor the guard frequency over southern Europe. <laughs> it's going to be... Quack, 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 quack. Oof, oof. Meow. All the time on guard. Okay, can't me there from Munich, 124, Oh, that's blaming at me. Blame good now, it's with 70 more help, like with T20 in my block. Is that like level 1 2 supposed to be? Is that 1 2 0 track? We are 100 miles straight in from the airport. You know what? Let's go, le let's go level change. Okay, that's descending quite quickly. Probably a bit more than I wanted. Let's start at 2,000 feet a minute. And mark point A2. That was a little bit too much. Yeah. Um, and hello then the chat greetings from Russia well greetings to Russia um, I'm sure you understood the word that I used but uh, I'm not going to explain the meaning of it in the live stream otherwise YouTube is probably going to block my channel 
Uh, uh, okay, let's get that speed up a little bit more. We'll just keep it at 0.77 uh, until we convert on the 330 knots. Elitist Maggie, hi Emmy, good to see you in the lovely Mad Dog. We'll need to rewatch the stream. Yeah, um. You need to rewatch the stream, but when you do, you can skip over the first 50 minutes or so. Okay, that rate of sound looks quite good there. Get us down at Kilima Fox. And we might even get a straight in earlier as well. It should be on a good altitude to take that straight in. Maybe two and a half thousand. Let's do that, two and a half thousand. And that should be good. Will of a dude, I'm Swedish and even I understood. <laughs> yep. Alright. Looks like the plane wants to convert up to 300 knots, but we'll not let it do that. Let's go, 300. Okay, uh, what else do we need to do? Well, not a lot really. We can read a descent checklist, that would serve me out. So, approach for landing briefing performed, flight guard system, set TRI, go around, on a data confirmed, V-Box set, altimeters, standard cross checked, hydraulic system, all strands high, and pressurization. Could you tell me which runway to use for belly? Check, uh, descent checklist. Okay, a lot of change, 3.30. So officially Berlin is closing in 12 minutes. Let's see how far we can get. Is that the hotel? Any chance you can coordinate some shortcuts? Or draw. Okay, the controller basically said, yeah, you can expect shortcuts soon. It's a little bit full in the arrival right now. Well, that's good though. If it's full in the arrival, it probably means that air traffic control is not going to go offline. Okay, sorry for talking German. Um, just a couple of guys talking about cancelling some uh, online days, and I was worried already that ATC might be leaving. Okay, vertical speed. We are low enough right now that we can accept any shortcut for a straight approach, and I'm kind of hoping for that. Not a problem, 572 is this. Okay, direct 2572. Execute. Well, that's something to start with. That's something to start with. And we are on the Wiener path. I'm just going to uh, maintain inverted speed right now. 
We'll probably have to uh, fly something like this, I expect. So, I'm just going to keep the airplane on the altitude where we are right now, and, uh, and on the path that we are flying right now. Then we'll have to see how that stuff is going to work out. So yeah, it is a little bit of gamble at the moment um, on the altitude. Sometimes it just is a bit of a gamble on how long you are going to fly and you may end up low, you may end up high. Um, that's what you have to work with then. Only in the Bible that now it's the 7 in the hotel, passing 155, descending 120, and 1 to Bravo 572. Let's see what's right, it's a flat all 100 in the Lima with some motor. Is that 100 checked? And let's quickly get information Lima. Request, latest, Berlin, arrival latest, sent. Contact director on 121, that's 1259, okay, Das haben wir noch fertig, dann fragt aber 6 Euro. Ja, 6 Euro schon. Berlin, Arrival, Echo, Richard, 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 Okay, we are basically approaching the holding stacks or the arrival delay right now. So let's go ahead and reduce our speed. We've got a 220 restriction on the arrival anyway, so let's let's get it back all the way 220 knots, and then we can basically start sitting out the arrival delay that we are going to have. Fly to live, what's my opinion or with you? Never, ever say with you. The word doesn't exist and the controller knows that you're in the frequency because you're talking to it. So don't say with you. It's probably as useless as the meow on the guard frequency. That's my opinion with you. So oh, that's the lights of the airport over there. Seven Motel left here in Q30. Okay, heading Q30, that is like over there. I don't think that that's going to be the base vector yet. But in any case, if we are on a radar vector, we no longer need the speed restriction, so we can go to the Okay, 10,000 contracts, lights are on, seatbelts on, Anglo Bank 25, APU off, and minimal. And we can see deselected contracts complete. So I do think we are going to get a little down factor in a few moments for a right hand down.
also we can see on TCAS there's still a couple aircraft over there, so we are definitely going to fly something. Departure, like this. Lufthansa 19962 again, uh, going around to teach uh, uh, heading for uh, KLS uh, Kilo. Benjamin, Kilo. why are pilots allowed to do meow and stuff like that on guard frequency? Shouldn't this be clear for emergencies? Uh, pilots are not allowed to do that. And I'm in hotel, left lane 250, descend 5000 to Okay, heading 250, 5000 feet, set out of the jar. 1025. Set three times passing 8500 now, descending 5000 with flex step by set. Two two zero one two one one two five Swiss seven hundred jump. Eight two twenty and one two one. So yeah, in my airline that was actually a memo not that long ago, where um, a search and rescue agency actually reported a flight for meowing on guard frequency. Direktor, hallo, bis Samuel Hotel. Samuel Hotel, Berlin, direkt Lower Deck. Minimum clean, and that is actually an increase. That's going to be 228 bis Samuel Hotel. Okay, 228. So let's see, fuel 4.3, that is plenty. We need 3.2. What's that? 4.2 now? Okay, I don't know what the thing is calculating. The semi motor, right here in 300, this is 3000. Okay, we are crossing the glide slope right now, so I would say that we are actually performing good. And let's go ahead and extend the center line. Yeah, can 655, contact to the tower, 118, decimal 8. 118, decimal 8, alright. Can you run 9 feet, 16, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, the 70 motor right heading 040, clear to ILS 070, clear to ILS 070, clear to ILS 070. Okay, we are a tiny bit below the glide slope, that's a good position to start your approach from. As we still have to reduce speed. Okay, so ILS is armed. We're 21 miles out, so we're going to keep the speed for now. However, we have to keep in mind that we do need to perform a CBA. Localizer capture. On my heading 085. Slightly overshot, but we are getting there again. I'm going to keep the lights on for now. In real life we turn them off, but um, in the sim you can just it's see a bit better like this. Okay, so slats extend. One eight one nine, I think one six zero one six zero one six zero five miles DME, one eight one nine. Okay, the next guy in the front of us. Who do you think two hundred with seven motor? Can we actually make it one eighty? Yep, did you speak one eight or not? One eighty with seven motor. Okay, cancelling that. Right slope is alive again.
But look at how the MD-80 has got problems there, slowing the airplane down. Um, it really is a challenge all, every time again. You know what? Vertical speeds. Let's help it a bit. Okay, one eight one nine. Okay, one eight one nine. Fifteen. Protector in tower. One one eight. Bye bye. Contact tower on one one eight. This one eight. Have a good day. Kilo one eight one nine. Yeah, where is my flight selector now? That's eleven. That's fifteen. Okay, the glide slope is coming in. Director Lufthansa 19962 again uh, heading 2505000 feet. Can you give me 500 feet a minute? That should help getting it down. And then we should have a glide slope capture any moment. So 70 miles speed 16 one six zero or great hard to the five mile finals with seven mile top. Black club capture. Three thousand feet set. Yeah. Okay, one sixty is set. Now let's see if we can get the speed under control or if it's actually just going to come up again as we resume our descent. But that looks quite stable at the moment. I'm happy with that. Table idle is at 170 knots, very good. Let's get a little bit of drag out and extend the landing lights. By the way, it is standard procedure on the MD-80 that um, the wing lights can be used as a substitute for the landing lights, except for take actual takeoff and landing, because the retract so over here actually caused quite a lot of drag. Right turn. Lufthansa 1962. Okay. 70 miles contact the tower on 198. Yes, 8 landing. Bye bye. 188 is well, let's give it a try. Ah, point eight. Okay. That's of course exactly what you should do all the time in the flight. Be heads down. Oh yeah, that that's a tower. Hello, tower. Good evening. Swiss seven Lima Hotel ILS or some right. Seven Lima Hotel. You're down. And flaps 28. So we're at 5 miles. The weight is 57 tons. Flaps 28, 139. So we can make it 144. Okay, final tracks. Landing gear, down, free green, flaps 28 extended, speed brake, armed, engine ignition on, UAP checked. And that's the final check is complete. IR203 Mike, for immediate departure on 07 right, when the for immediate departure. Okay, auto brake on. KLM1819, contact building ground, 121, this is Contact April 1 1 2 1 this
Bitte 7 Lima Hotel, wann wir 0 7 Right Clear to Land, für 3 4 0 Right Clear to Land, für 0 7 Right Clear to Land, für 7 Lima Hotel. Ah ja, du, 0 oh, Lima, Contact for Departure, 1 to 6, das ist 4 to 5 dabei. Contact Departure, 1 to 6, 4 to 5, für 0 Lima Kick, für 0 Lima. Als ein 6 zu Echo Bravo, wenn ich sauer hallo, wenn ich check 3 vor 0 Degrees, 3 Nord, Number 2. Minimum, continue. 100. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Okay, speed break up. Trust was normal. I don't see anyone very close on Chica, so we'll just let it, let it roll to the third exit. Manual brakes. Why don't I get the auto brake to some light? Hello there. Now the auto brake to some. The Suspect Mike with me, Billy Tower. Hello, with 340 degrees, 3 knots, runway 07 left, get for takeoff. 07 left, get for takeoff, get Okay, welcome to Berlin, 121.7. 07 Lima Hotel, contact Billy Tower, uh, ground, 121.7, bye bye. 121.7, Spitz 7 Lima Hotel, ciao, danke. Atlantic 2 Echo Bravo with 340 degrees, 3 knots, uh, 07 right, get to land. Not hello, Swiss 7 Lima Hotel, I'm dedicated. Swiss 7 Lima Hotel, we're going to hello, taxi via Victor 2, hold for top Bravo. Victor 2, hold for Bravo, Swiss 7 Lima Hotel. Okay, 1819, taxi 2, set Bravo 1-1 via Victor 1. Uh, okay, Victor 2 is straight ahead and then hold short of the crossing uh, taxiway. Bravo 11 via uh, Echo and Victor Charlie, KLM Hold short of Bravo, and that means we can turn to the left over here, and then hold short of the next text where they're after. So, once we've been airborne, we just took an hour and five minutes for something where Simbri predicted one hour and twenty. That is quite alright. Okay, that's an oncoming 747. That's pretty surely the reason why we have to hold shot off here. Okay, after landing checklist. Flap slats, 15 extended, speed brakes retracted, engine ignition is off, Peter and static heaters off, anti ice off, radar off, after landing checklist complete. And thank you very much for helping out with the tower frequency there, guys. Uh, that was much appreciated. Okay, that's the 747 without any textures on it coming on over there. Yeah, that's quite close with the wing. How close is that? Ah, well, there's a couple of meters between there. No problem. Okay, um... And, Philip, your radar was in clamp mode with the vertical speed mode selected. That's the reason for the overspeed. You have to select climb power to get the auto throttle system working properly. Okay, thanks. Alpha 07 via Victor 2, Victor Mike, Victor Fadi, and Foxford. Alpha 07 via Victor 2, Victor Mike, Charlie and Fox. Swiss 7 Limota. Okay, we can do that.
provided our airplane starts rolling, provided I release the parking brake. Okay, so Victor 2, Victor Mike, Victor Charlie. Uh, then Charlie zero 01. Let's see if I get that one right. Um, I honestly find the apron a little, a little bit complicated. But it should be straight out over here for a while, then Victor Mike onto Victor Charlie. Thank you and good night, good morning, good morning. And night. then onto Alpha 2. Uh, okay, but it's one hour. Uh, 21, thank you for flying. Don't need to follow me, even though that would be much appreciated. Yeah, thank you too. I could very well imagine that they usually follow me on uh, the apron here in real life. In most German airports, they seem to do. Okay, so stay with me for a second until we reach the stand, because then you are going to get the um, landing report from Sim Toolkit Pro. So, speed limit on the apron, 50 knots, but there is a lot of space over here. I am going to take it a tiny bit faster than that. The good thing in the mat dock is that as soon as your aircraft is actually rolling, the thing continues very nicely in idle thrust. So, that's Victor Mike over here, onto Victor Charlie. Obviously, I am cutting a couple corners here, but we can see that there is no more traffic over here, so... That's why it's kind of okay to do. Anyway, um, while we are still nearing the stand, let's summarize the key points of today's live stream. The uh, FTs and Plus sound pack really makes the uh, MD-80 a lot more interesting to fly. I'll have a specialized video on that sound pack available for you guys over the next couple of days uh, where I'm going to show off some of the important features of that sound pack just so that you can get a better idea instead of having to watch an entire live stream. However, my um, very short summary is that it really is a lot more fun to fly when the plane sounds, pro sounds properly and that it definitely does now. So much more enjoyable plane to fly like this. Apart from that, um, what else is there to say? Well, the most important point here is that you are probably going to see me fly the uh, MD-80 a bit more often. Obviously not to Zurich. Now, apart from that, Berlin ATC, as always, very good guys. Don't fly to Zurich. And we'll probably... Um, have a good time ground, in that airplane two, in the future. So, retract the flaps, Mike, don't fly to four, Zurich, and then we can do the yeah, shutdown checklist in a few moments. Alpha, Alpha, okay, and here we go. Anton, is Berlin a favorite airport of mine? Um, yeah, at least here on Watson, um, they have, they have the uh, weekly event, they are doing quite good ATC over here, so, yeah, I would definitely count Berlin as uh, one of my favorites over here. Now, number one is still Frankfurt, if only we had a good scenery for it, but at least in terms of the airport itself and the routes and everything, Frankfurt is still my favorite. Oh, by the way, don't fly to Zurich. Okay, APU available, and then we can shut the engines down. Now listen to that once again. Okay, both engines below 20. Continue taxi to stand Bravo 14 via Victor 2, uh, Lufthansa 1. Having through disarm slots and open doors. So, start onboarding. Ground power, please. 
Interesting, they do not open the doors automatically when they start unloading the airplane. We don't need you. You. When you start the boarding, they open the doors automatically, but when you start the deboarding, apparently that doesn't happen. Interesting. Okay, so let's read the um, parking checklist. Fuel tank pumps off, aux and trans hydraulic pumps. Off, park brake pressure, set checked, parking checklist complete. Alright, we have made it. It only took like what? Two hours and thirty for one hour flight? <laughs> anyway, we are here, that's all that counts. Okay then, um, let's have a look into Sim Toolkit then to see the landing review. And here we go. So, that's our route of flight, straight out from the runway 32, then a right hand turn towards Degas, left turn out, and then the shortcut we negotiated over here, and then in Berlin, nice shortcuts over there, pretty much as expected, so I am quite happy with that. Um, by the way, don't fly to Zurich. Okay, so view the landing details. Let's see on the report itself. Alpha Victor One Echo. View full report, please. Here we go. So, runway 07 right. We touch down a tiny bit beyond the aiming point, a tiny bit to the right of the center line there. Apparently, it doesn't have any touchdown positional data. That's unfortunate. Nonetheless, speed 138, and let's quickly see the target for this one was. Come on, 138, perfect. Okay, so exactly on speed, 1.04 Gs and 173 feet a minute. I would call that an almost perfect landing. So, at least that is something good to end this live stream with. Oh, and don't fly to Zurich. Alright, nonetheless, thank you very much for joining everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this. So while our passengers are currently getting out the airplane, I'm going to close this uh, stream saying thank you very much for bearing with me, especially during that departure, don't fly to Zurich, and I'm really looking forward to welcoming you all again, hopefully very soon. Until then, thank you for watching, and I'm looking forward to see you all again soon. Have a nice evening, whatever's left of it, and, well, see you soon. And don't fly to Zurich.